So with the 90th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Rams selected Kobe Turner. He was one of 14 selections they had, so kind of easy to go under the radar when they had so many picks. And just in general, you know, when we're getting into the 90s, it's going to be a little bit later. It just is. But... What's interesting is that he ended up having a really good year. He was, uh, you know, a contender for defensive rookie of the year. And if you go back and look at his like tape you, and look at his college numbers, you almost wonder, how did he fall so far in the first place? You look at his pro football focus grades from his, uh, you know, college days, and you see that these were really good numbers. I mean, a grade of over 90, uh, you know, uh, pass rush r- win rate of 14.7, run stop rate of 11.5. These are like great numbers and usually guys that have pff grades in the 90s at the college level end up being good nfl players pretty consistently watching film i think there were two main issues that kind of hurt him one was not film related but let's use the film related one first you see that it's going to be a tight end who's going to block him one-on-one on this play as you see here i mean you know currently tight end is you know kind of in position to make this play but what uh Turner does really a really good job of at the NFL level and what he did at the college level is using his hands. You see, it's his left hand on kind of that right side of the tight end's body. Watch him knock that tight end over. But at this point, multiple other uh, offensive linemen are over to block Turner, which for Turner, hey, you already did your job. You got the guy who was supposed to block you out of the way. Someone else now has to block you, meaning that they can't block the guy they're supposed to block. So he's already done a good job. But when the run ends up in his direction, he also still makes the play. This is a really high degree of difficulty play. Pulling off the, you know, having the hands to get that tight end off of you. Sure, that was a mismatch, but still, uh, winning it so quickly that multiple other offensive linemen had to go over and block you. And then when the running back took, tried to take advantage of that by running in your area, you're still able to reach out and make tackle. Really high degree of difficulty stuff. Okay, well then the question you're saying is, then how is this a negative? I thought you said this was a negative. Here's the thing, is watching his film... You look at that play, and it's really easy to sit here and say, well, that's not going to work at the NFL level. Sure, the hands were good against a college tight end. Is that going to work at the NFL level? And a decent amount of his wins at the college level, and there were a lot of wins, like I said, the numbers were very good. Uh, A lot of times they weren't these, like, overpowering guys, like just looking like a monster out there. He isn't a physical freak. He's a bit undersized, uh, despite being, I believe, 6'3". He's only listed at 288, so not the biggest interior uh, defensive lineman. You know, I I think uh, Rams fans can think of another guy who wasn't the biggest uh, interior defensive lineman coming out of college. Of course, Aaron Donald was at about uh, 280, although a little bit shorter, so a little bit uh, stronger there. But still, that's something that I think is going to cause you to fall a bit in the draft. And I think when you pair that with a lot of his wins being more technique wins, a lot of people, a lot of uh, call, a lot of NFL scouts do just get concerned by that type of player. But you know, that's kind of the thing. Those are essentially the two issues combined. Of those are his wins and his you know not being a you know, physical freak. I think scared some people off. But then you watch his NFL tape. And you start noticing that, shockingly, the guy who won a lot in college also won a lot at the NFL level. For example, this play, where it's going to be a a one-on-one matchup against the center for the uh, Giants on this play. And watch what happens. So, when this play begins, you see him kind of use, actually uses his reach pretty well. He's the one who gets the hand placement he wants. The center does not have his hands on Turner. And because of this, Turner can, you know, uh, make some good things happen. Watch him kind of knock to the side, that center, gets over, runs around the guard, actually, and gets to the quarterback for a sack right there. Again, that's one of those plays that if you see that at the college level, you're like, yeah, but will that work at the NFL level? But it is working at the NFL level. Sometimes moves just work, and I think that sometimes there is value in a guy who just finds a way to get to the quarterback and can just use, you know, uh, technique to win and doesn't need to rely on pure athleticism. But, like, also, I want to bring up, like, this guy isn't, like, uh, you know, a, a scrawny guy out there either. It's not like he can't use his strength or athleticism to win. This play, going up one-on-one against a guard, and, you know, it is fair to say to some degree that, like, hey, playing next to Aaron Donald helps you out a lot, gives you a lot more one-on-one matchups, although it is also worth mentioning that a lot of what the Rams try and do is generate as many one-on-one matchups for Donald as possible, meaning that uh, Kobe Turner actually still got double-teamed a decent amount last year, so uh, don't think that's too uh, misleading in terms of his numbers. But anyway, one-on-one matchup here. 
you're going to see that one Terod Taylor takes the snap right here. You know, Turner's able to get a bit towards the outside, but hey, all the guard has to do, push Turner towards the bottom of the screen and you're good. It's going to be kind of a strength situation here. But Turner is able to use his strength to get the win. Again, I'm not going to sit here and say Turner is Aaron Donald when it comes to, you know, uh, being just strong on these types of plays, but he can get it done. And again, he uses his hands to get himself in good situations, and then he still has the strength and athleticism to take advantage of that. And like I said, he's kind of just a player who finds ways to win. This is another, this isn't all he does, but this is certainly a nice bonus. You see where he is on the field on this play. Watch how one Terod Taylor takes the snap. Turner is going to kind of get pushed towards, you know, the, uh, behind the uh, quarterback. So, okay, you know, this is a loss, right? He did not win right away. But the best pass rushers and the best defensive linemen find ways to win even when they don't win. Watch him really, again, have the speed to reach out. And still, he got half a sack on that play. So, really good stuff there by Turner you know, after maybe not winning initially, still finding ways to make stuff happen. And when you win enough and then also have this as an add-on, that's where it's nice. So to me, he is someone who, again, does a lot of things really well. And I think that it's the debate that always, you know, just happens when we're talking about prospects in general. It's kind of the age-old question of, would you rather a player who is maybe better right now, but maybe doesn't have the ceiling that someone who has just more uh, more pure strength, more pure size, more pure athleticism, and like I said, he, not to say that Turner isn't an athlete, but just there are better, you know, guys who are better at that than him. And logically, I think both are sound arguments. Like, just if you're just purely using logic, then... I think the argument of, well, let me take the guy who's just a better player right now because that gives him a higher floor. I know he's probably going to be all right right away. Uh, and even the maybe silver lining of if he sucks right away, then I know he sucks. I don't have to waste five years hoping he someday is good. Whereas the guy who has you know really good athleticism but maybe isn't the best at technique, you can say, well, we'll coach up the technique and then we have a great player. The issue, of course, with that line of thinking is that doesn't always happen that way. Guys who, you know, it's not always so easy to just coach up the technique. These are adults when you're entering the league. Sometimes you're just, you know, you just don't have the hand plates. Sometimes you just don't have the technique. And what are you going to do? Just like sometimes the guy who is a technique guy who isn't a great athlete sometimes just doesn't have the athleticism to work at the NFL level. Logically, both have their pros and cons, which is why I don't like to just use logic. Logic is good if you can't use data, but sometimes data is the, is always, it always should be an important aspect of of this, and I prefer using data first and then logic on top of it. Uh, and what the data says is that the Kobe Turner style of player is far more likely to succeed than the different style of player, than the, uh, you know, the guy who is a great athlete who needs to be coached up on technique. A lot more often, Kobe Turners are the guys that are third round picks that end up being really good players than, uh, you know, the athletic guy who isn't isn't as good technique wise. So long story short, what can we learn from the Kobe Turner situation? One, I think he's good. Uh, you know, just evaluation. I think he's a good player. But two, I think it's a good lesson in what the Rams like to do. Why the Rams have been a successful franchise for a while is they get a lot of draft picks and just draft good players and a decent amount of them hit. And they don't all hit, but... When you do this, you tend to get some diamonds in the rough in a way that other uh, you know teams don't get. If you want to say, well, what's Turner's ceiling? I don't know. He already had like nine sacks as a rookie. I think his ceiling's pretty good. Even if this is just all he is, a consistent 10-sack guy as an interior defensive lineman is like, that's the guy you pay $20 million a year for at least. So uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say pretty good. I'd say his ceiling's pretty good if he's already this good. Those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always... Thanks for watching.